Hello and welcome to uh, one little episode f- uh, from uh, School of Applied Technology uh, where we teach people how to code JavaScript among other things. And uh, what we often find that people are struggling with is the notion of callbacks. When you get started with JavaScript, callbacks can be very confusing. And it uh, is quite a lot of things to unpack before you understand that. So I wanted to take a few moments here to sit down and talk about what callbacks are and how to use them. Because they are basically everywhere in all JavaScript you write. There are reasons for that that we will not unpack yet. So the first episode here, the first part of this will actually be us talking about the feature of JavaScript that is key, that you can pass functions to other functions. And I will basically run through this blog post here that you can find at saltstockholm.github.io, pro tips, passing functions. So imagine that we have a function here. It's just a very simple little file here. So I'm going to write a function using the old syntax here. Uh, Let's call it highsayer that basically just logs to the console hi, like so. It's shouting. I'm not going to use semicolon. If we run this now, what will happen? Well, nothing will happen because we have not used that function. It just declared. So nothing happens. If we want to get to use the function, we call functions in JavaScript by doing two parentheses like so. So now when we run this, it will actually run this function over here, which will hit this console log. Let's see. Yes, so far so good. This is really cool. But what is even cooler is that I can write another function here called function main. And that will take a little parameter. Let's call it fn, which is is short for function. And in this function we do another console log statement uh, just to say about to use a function passed to me. And then on the next uh, log statement here, yes, let's just log that function. So I'm just going to log out that parameter. So now if I call main here and then pass it high sayer So notice that I'm not using the parentheses here. I'm just passing the name of the function as a reference in here. Meaning that fn, once I get in here, fn will be bound to highsayer. So I'm coming in here. I will get this log statement on line 6. And then I will do log of this. What on earth will happen now? Let's see. I'm going to call that. And see, it says, I'm going to pump up the font a bit here. It actually tells us that uh, the thing that you passed is a function called highsayer. And remember, we know how to call functions, right? Because uh, we're not going to use history. We're just going to go highsayer and then two parentheses. We can do that in here as well. But now this parameter is called function, fn. So we're going to do that to call it. So that's how you call a function. Very easy. So let's uh, run this. So now we get here, we're passing a reference to highsayer. So once we get in here, fn here holds a reference to the highsayer function. We're coming here, doing a log statement, logging out the type, which is a function. And then we're going to call the function, which will execute this code. So we can defer this execution until later here. We can just say later on, call this function that I'm going to pass to you as a parameter. Let's run it and see what happens. Here you go. Very exciting. We get that log statement. In fact, let's take these two stupid log statements out now and just run it again. And now we can see that we can actually pass highsayer and defer the execution of this line until later. What if we wanted highsayer to have a parameter? This is a little bit boring. Let's add a parameter for name so that we can do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, Although, don't get your hopes up too high. 
So this is cool because now we could call it like this. Hi Sayer Marcus. If I do that, yes it works. It shouts hi into my face. Perfect. But what will happen if I want to do, if I now want to pass it a parameter? I can't do this. I can't do this because if I do that, uh, then hi say will actually be called. I don't know even what will happen now if I do this. Well, something really strange happened because now, first see how it prints Marcus, which, re and then return nothing. So function here is bound to nothing. If we do a console log of it, in this case, it should be undefined, I presume, or maybe no, actually, yeah, undefined. Yeah, here you go, undefined, because we are not returning anything from high say. So we can't do that. What's a bit of a uh, what's a bit of a uh, sidetrack? But uh, let's go back. We because we want to pass a reference to the high say function. But the high say now has a parameter. So we could do this. We could pass it Marcus like so. And that would work. But then we only can hi say hi to Marcus, which is very, very boring. So instead we want another uh, parameter here, name to greet. And then that function. And now we can actually say Marcus. And then as a second parameter, so Marcus is bound to name to greet. And the second parameter is a reference to the function hi sayer. And then in main here, we use this parameter and now we can pass it into function, which means that it will actually work. So we can change this into something uh, a little bit more uh, fun maybe, or any kind of name that you can come up with. So hi Siri. Uh, oh, that was dangerous. Don't say that aloud on a Mac. Strange things can happen. Okay, so that is really cool. We can now pass in any name we want into the high, uh, into main and then use it later when we actually call the function that we passed in. But usually we don't do this. Usually these short little functions are actually inlined in here when they are so short. Uh, sometimes when they are longer, we might want to write it out as a longer function. So let's see how that would look. Well, that would mean inlining a function is basically just, instead of writing the function up here, I'm going to make a copy out of it now, I will just write it here. So let's replace this with the function, like so. Uh, when we get here, typically we don't use the name of the function, it's just an anonymous function like that, and we now have a function in here. So now uh, main gets Siri as the first parameter and then this function here. See, here's the function. Remember that I just copied in there. So in main, the function that we're calling here, remember we're still calling main. Main looks like this. It takes a name to greet and a function. So the name to greet is Siri and the function is all of this. This is the function. It's just declared here, it's not called here. Just like the hi sayer function is declared here and passed as an argument here. We need another name. I'm going to say hi to both Marcus and Siri. So now we're just pressing a reference here. And this is this exactly the same thing, but we're writing the function in line here. So when we get here, name to greet will be CD and function will be bound to this thing here. And then we can call it as before. We call the function, this function here. And now we're passing it name to greet, which is CD. So we're passing it a name here. So this should be uh, this should say name uh, hi Marcus and then hi Siri. Phew, it works. So let's walk through that once again because this can be a little bit confusing before we try start to clean this up a little bit. The, the main function takes two parameters. The first one is the name to greet, just a string, and the second one is a function. So when we get in here, we have a string here with a name to greet and we have a function which is just a function. So let's log those two out just for, 
for brevity name to greet and then fn and we're gonna run it again so now you see the name to greet is Marcus the function is hi sayer here's a nice little trick by the way let's do that so now we see name to greet is Marcus function is hi sayer we can I think if we do that here as well it'd be very easy for us to read like so and then we call the function with name to greet so in the first place the name the function is called hi sayer and in the second case it doesn't have a name i don't know this let's try to give it a name hi sayer inline what will happen now yeah sure you can have a name there no no worries usually you don't though when you inline a function because it will only be available in this scope so there's no reason giving it a name but you can if you want to so that's how this whole thing goes together but very often nowadays we don't use this clunky syntax but we actually do a much shorter syntax so let's convert this high sayer here into a shorter version and a good way of doing that is that the first thing we can do is actually to make this to an anonymous function but store it in a constant called high sayer like so this doesn't change anything it's just that it says now that this anonymous function is bound to the constant high sayer so just doing that doesn't change anything we can run it again and it works exactly the same uh, actually let's do that here as well we're gonna make this an anonymous function that we bind to a constant called main perfect everything is fine but then nowadays we don't use this clunky syntax we are using arrow uh, arrow uh, functions instead which basically means that if we clean this up a little bit we can take out the word function and we can make it into an arrow like this and this will also just work perfectly fine it works exactly the same but and when it's only one line of code we don't need these curly braces so we can bring this all up on one uh, line and now you see that it's just one line a little bit long maybe but it's doing exactly the same thing so let's try to clean that uh, to run that again and it works exactly the same it's now much shorter and in fact when there's only one parameter you don't even need parentheses around the name so you can just do that and it still works let's clean the main function up as well so what I said was that when you're using arrow function you don't need a keyword function you can take that out and replace it with a arrow over here when there's only one line in we don't need the curly braces but this has two lines so let's keep it like that for now and then it works exactly the same we can't take the parentheses out because there are two parameters so we have a nice little function here now and this is really useful because it's shorter but it's extremely useful when you're using when you're inlining functions because remember uh, high sayer here now refers to this constant that is bound to a function that is defined here but now in a very very short space so let's do the same thing here where we inline the function and you'll see the power of this if i now do an arrow function out of this function i can take out the keyword function and replace it with an arrow i'm going to run keep running here just to make sure that we don't break anything it still works see that this function here is still just a function then since it's only one parameter i can make it into a uh, without parentheses like that and it still works and since there's only one line of code here i actually don't even need the the curly braces so i can take the curly braces out as well and it will now look like this and then typically we have a very short parameter here so it makes becomes really really short and it still works because it's that's just the name of the parameter so now all of a sudden you see that this is very very tight functionality uh, but it can be extremely confusing to read this so let's walk it through it once more as the last time hi sayer is a function this is the definition of the function it is a function that takes one parameter and all it does is that it logs that 
parameter in a string with hi and then the name of the uh, and then the value of the parameter. We can call hi sayer, not history. I don't know how many times I've done that by doing this. And when we do that, it will print hi mees like so. But what is even cooler is that we can pass a reference to that function into another function. So here's a function called main. It takes a name to greet and then a function. So when we come here, I've now passed hi sayer bound to the fn and Marcus bound to name to greet. So where we come here, we log out those two parameters to see where we are. And then we call the function here, much like we called the function directly here, passing it the parameter name to greet. So this is really powerful because it means that we can defer the execution of HiSayer until we are using it over here. We are using it by calling it with parentheses and passing it the name to greet. Typically, we don't write the, the, the function that we're passing in as a separate function up here. We can do that, but we don't need to. We can actually write it right in, in the place where we are using it. So here we're saying the first parameter of the function is Siri. Name to greet will be Siri. And the function will be this function over here. An anonymous function that only takes one parameter and then just logs out that parameter. The parameter name happened to be uh, n, but I can change it into something more useful. So that means on line 10, when we call uh, main, we come up here, name to greet is bound to Siri, fn is bound to this function that is declared here in line. We are not calling the function here, we're just declaring the function here. And then we come up here, fn is bound to this anonymous function that we are calling here, passing it Siri, which is bound to name to greet. So running it once last time now, and that's exactly what happens. Name to greet is Siri, fn is an anonymous function that we can't really see the definition of. So that is the first part of callbacks, which is that you can actually pass functions as parameters in JavaScript, which is a really powerful thing, but can be pretty confusing the first times you see it as well. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.